Yes. Well then, good evening, morning, night, whatever, guys. This is Genius Days. My name is Ryan G from the Netherlands with my host, Alejandro Acosta and Sumit Chatterjee. Sumit, hit it off. Hey there, guys. Welcome back to the third installment of Genius Days. Today, we're talking about vibrational marketing, spiritual selling, and poetic copywriting. Because we know the vibes are so important, they speak louder than words at times, we've decided to really focus on this from different angles. Me from a brain coach, flow state coach point of view. Of course, we have Ivan, who's going to be focusing on it in terms of an energetic perspective, as well as a body work perspective. And he's a personal reality coach. And we have Ryan on the other side as well, uh, focusing on business process perspective uh, through data consulting, as well as getting people to get more clients. And we're also blessed with uh, Joe's presence here, who's both of our, me and Ryan's business coach. So welcome, Joe. So kicking it right off, we know that we buy from emotion and then we justify using logic. So first and foremost, it's important to create an emotive presence for your brand. What does your brand actually make others feel? What are the feelings that you're emitting off of the imagery that you're choosing, the logo that you're choosing, the archetype of the character, the business entrepreneur that you are? There's a statement that goes, we don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. And I think that plays into vibrational marketing as well. To really understand that, you know, what is the character that we're building in terms of our business, in terms of our character that will guide us towards a specific kind of functionality? So what do you guys think about this? Right, I'll take it over real quick, uh, Acosta. So what's coming up for me is everything starts from the vibe that you carry, the, the brand values, the virtues, and the center that evidently the way that you market yourself has to have a connection with what the company stands for. And usually that could be summarized very cleanly in, you know, what are the three problems that you solve? What are the three solutions that you have? And evidently, there's where the values have been printed. It's the same thing as what are the three values I have as a person? What stands true to me? And it's in the resonation of you know connecting with people when you're marketing and selling and providing coaching is where the true power lies. Alejandro, what's your thoughts on that? I think like how like how they used to teach in pickup where they said you have to speak to you have to speak to to the Madonna and you have to speak to the to like the real version of her, you know, and it's sort of like you're, I think you got to do the same thing. I mean, it's sort of like the whole world is pickup, you know, your whole life is in a way like that's why pickup is so important when you translate it into, into real world uh, application. And I think it's just that it's just, I think it's just that, yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Yeah. So you're saying like, in terms of like gamification of situations, like creating a particular, you know, persona or archetype that helps you just be much more of an attractive character, right? That we can build a community around, right? Like people want to be around people that are getting them to feel good, right? We, we often do things just because they're fun to do them. And so I think that we're going to have to try to recognize that this person, this place, this event, whatever you're selling, it has a trigger to a connection that is linked to a value. And so what you were saying, Ryan, in terms of finding your top values is really important because those values are connected to the pleasure receptors in your brain as well. And you're, you're really able to understand that you may not be exactly be able to say what causes your feelings but what you can do is 
you know that you have them. And so you're, you're going to have to use your feelings in order to get your message out there and speak from the heart, speak from the truth of who you are. And a lot of people, they create authenticity as a technique. I've noticed this a lot, like a lot of brand brands, they, they try to appear authentic, but actually there's some ulterior motive or something behind it. Obviously the process of sales and marketing is for the fact that you make a sale that you get the client at the end. Something that Joe actually taught me, which was very interesting is this idea of being the trusted advisor rather than the pushy salesperson. Right. So this neediness energy actually pushes people away a lot of times because it seems like you don't have anything other than that sale. Like that sale is so important to you that you're, you're just latching onto that. And that becomes like an attachment. It comes from a frequency of fear rather than actually love and spreading the love. And so, yeah, I think it's really important to be able to not get so attached to the sale and start the sales process um, from a place where you're completely just no pressure. You're not carrying any tension with you. Uh, what do you what do you say to that, Joe? I remember you telling me this. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people are in business for the wrong reason. I think they're in business to make money. And the truth is, is we can be in business to change. We can change fucking lives. OK, is that OK for me to say? Um, yeah, you know, um, you know, the money, meaning and freedom, you know, there's a giving and receiving. And when when we're trying to get the sale, that's just the wrong vibration in the first place. It's, you know, for me personally, and I think I'm very unique in this is I don't set income goals. I set impact goals. I want to change 100 people's lives in the next 12 months, you know, help them with their business, because that's what I do. Um, and so there is no leader without a tribe. There is no tribe without a leader. The highest paid person is the tribal leader, but we don't follow a person. We follow a cause. And so when your product or service is, is a cause, it's coming from your core, you know, you emanate a vibration, you know, like you have a problem and I'm here to solve that problem. I'm here to change your life. And so when we come from that place, you can't fake authenticity. You know, you can't you can't manufacture authenticity. Uh, this, you know, authenticity comes from intention. And if you look at the word intention, it's inner tending. It's like when you heal where, you, you know, the, the secret, you know, the movie, The Secret says, you know, put your intentions out in the universe. But it's not the out in the universe part that's important. It's where does it come from? And when it comes from an inner vibration, when it comes from an inner place that's healed. OK then you're going to, because you're coming from that core of that place, it's super attractive. The vibration of, I, you know, you have problems and I have superpowers and I'm here to help you solve your problems. When it comes from that place, it's a purified place. And so you're going to sell more when you come from that place. And so, you know, we look at giving and receiving, you know, and you can't receive without giving. And if you want to receive a lot, you got to learn to give a lot. And so, and if you give from an, a, a pure place, it's going to vibrate and resonate. People, people are going to feel it's like, wow, this person is real. They're like, they really want to help me solve my problems. Like, like I want that. I'll pay for that. And so it, it it's the way of like selling. It's the, like the sell with no sell. It's, it's like, I'm here to help people solve their problems. And, you know, and, and when they pay me, I solve their problems, you know, I have cups, mugs that I printed up for my clients. You know, I will solve your problems and you will pay me gratefully and generously. And so I come from a pure place to solve your problems, but I, you know, I'm not obligated to do that shit for free. Okay. And if you don't want to pay me to solve your problems, I'll go lay on the beach and you can live with your problems. So, so, um, but when you come from this core place that I have so much to give to you that I can change your life, um, like, Giving is better than receiving because giving starts the receiving process. Okay. And so that's what I have to say to start. Yeah. Giving starts the receiving process for sure. So in terms of, you know, personally, the, when I'm making copywriting or I'm, I'm making a post, I think about what's the conversation going on 
in my ideal client, you could say's mind. Like what is the storyline that they're stepping into? What what is their phase of transformation that they're going through? You know, where are they hanging around? You know, what is the what is the music that they listen to, right? What are the books that they read? What what is their tribe? What is their vibe like in a sense? And understanding that and speaking to that one person helps to talk to the many people. It's quite interesting how that happens in terms of you know, you create this character archetype and let's say that let's say that you sell to a particular niche, right? Let's say that you sell to people who are in the niche of yoga, right? Let's say that you're trying to start a yoga brand and you want to stand out. Well, first of all, you're going to have to disconnect from all the yoga brands out there that are doing the same things, using the same fonts, you know, sounding similar, and it's not adding anything to the unique vibration of who they are, right? So I think stepping in with your own thing in a way that it can also resonate and relate to others. Of course, authenticity is important, but the relevance of that authenticity is equally important in terms of what the market actually wants, right? These big products are there to fill in the gap of the marketplace in a sense. So instead of you know, seeing it as this light at the end of the tunnel, understand that everything is light. You know, there, there is no tunnel. It's, it's what we create through the process of us just showing up and being um, influential and impactful human beings, which is using both the masculine and the feminine energy, right? In that way. You know, I just, uh, I just spent some money. I, I just hired somebody to help me with my social media market. Now, I, that wasn't on my list. Okay, I wasn't on my list to go hire somebody. I've been doing my own social media marketing. You know, I put my posts together. I make my videos, okay? However, um, the person that I met, I met him through a seminar, the Billion Dollar Brotherhood. And I've been watching him promote his own mater material and his own personal branding. And, um, you know, the truth is, You're muted, Joe. Oh, so did you hear any of what I just said? Yeah, uh, it just got cut off near the end. Yeah, for some reason it muted. So, um, you know, I he was not on my, my list of somebody to buy from. I, I was not looking for a social media marketing agency, okay? But because of his vibration, because he's walking the talk, because I see the great stuff he's doing, with his own work and, and the way he's poetically walking through the world, okay? I, I see what he's doing and I saw that he, he's, he wasn't just selling, you know? We, we, he connected at a human level. Um, he understood that I, number one is, I do need help get the work, word out because I've said things, you know, like I am the bottleneck in my business. And he's been helping me with my personal brand, but it wasn't because of copywriting. It wasn't because of sales pitch, but it was really a reflection of who he was in the world, how he was walking the talk, how I'm impressed by the way he's walking the talk. He's got the energy, he's got the vibration. And it's like, you know what? He made an offer to me to take his good energy, his good vibration uh, uh, of what he's doing to brand himself personally. And he's saying, Joe, I'm going to commit to you to take that same vibration that I'm carrying and help you get your message out, get your vibration out um, and brand you, you know, like you have an amazing brand Joe, of who you are and we need to get it out there in more powerful ways. I'm like, you know what? I'll give it a shot. And it wasn't a sales pitch. It was really because he was coming from a place of service and he wasn't really trying to sell me. He was truly trying to help me. And, you know, he's bringing on a lot of heat to what I'm doing now and making my life a lot easier. And so there's this thing of selling without selling and marketing without marketing. And, and like you said, when you're vibrationally being that cause of service to change people's lives as a massive contribution, you know, it's like you're willing to be a massive contribution to me and you're only going to be charging me a thousand bucks a month. And I can see, you know, it's like, hell yeah, I'll buy from you. And so it was a, it was a sales pitch of no sales pitch. 
kind of reminds me of like how Bruce Lee has acting, non-acting, right? Or natural unnaturalness. I like that. Selling without selling. Yeah, that, that's very true. And yeah, when someone shows up and actually embodies that commitment, it's, it's very different. And, you know, I was recently talking about this idea of awareness by proximity. So when you're around someone who has that vibe, you get, you start to adopt those traits in yourself and it starts this awesome ripple effect. So yeah, that collaboration mindset in terms of selling something rather than the competitive mindset of like, I'm trying to take everybody down with me, you know, uh, I'm going to try to fight this instead of this win lose mentality that a lot of people get into when they are selling to think of it as win, 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 a win for you, a win for the prospect and a win for the universe at large. Totally. Yeah, you know, uh, I did an exercise on my group coaching call yesterday, and it's called uh, Love, Hate, Create. And it's a different formula for putting together your elevator speech. And it really is like, I love these great things. You know, I hate these negative things. And that's why I created a program. And what's so powerful about that is it comes from the core. I love seeing people succeed in their business. You know, for you... You know, I love going into the flow state, you know, I love, you know, um, help. I love seeing people start a business and, and succeed. Okay. I love it when somebody can walk away from, a, you know, when they can start their own business and, and create their own destiny. But I hate seeing people fail in business. And I genuinely hate that. And I hate seeing people waste their talents and their gifts, and their music on a job that's stealing their soul. And that's why I created the employee escape plan. That's why I created the business happiness blueprint. Okay, so that you can do what you love, share the love, receive the love. And what's so powerful, so like in your own business, you know, I love seeing people in the flow state. I hate, you know, seeing people like operating their brain at a fraction of a fraction of their true potential. And that's why I created you know, the flow zone Academy and genius days. And like, when you can come from that core and, and like you've intertended, like this is my core of who I am. And I, I put that out into the universe. It's attractive as hell. It's super attractive. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the integrity factor is really important there. Like, who are you being when nobody's watching, right? Like what is your character when, you're just by yourself. Like, are you still walking your talk then? You know, are you still, you know, holding up uh, your values in that moment? I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they, they skip over doing the, the shadow work, like the, the things that they deny in themselves. They don't really look deep within themselves to find that inner tending or that core. So I think when people finally understand that, okay, I've been avoiding this business thing for so long, I'm gonna finally step in and the dragons that I slay along the way, like it's gonna be a part of the adventure in the game. Like, I think that's what makes the journey super exciting. Um, yeah, I and I think that's where most people are missing out. They're, they're not taking the time to do the inner work. They're in business to make money, not to make a difference. And so like, what do you stand for? A lot of people don't know what they stand for. You know, it's like when you take the time to say, I stand for this powerful cause, you know, the tribe, you know, we don't follow a person. We follow that cause. And when you're a, when you're a stand for that cause, you know, employee escape plan, you know, I'm a, I'm a stand for self-reliance through entrepreneurship instead of now I have to create my own languaging employer reliance or government reliance or charity reliance or family reliance or spouse reliance. You know, how bad is it that like you're, you're in a relationship, you know, and you have a spouse um, and you depend on that spouse for money and you have to always go back to them and ask for money. How much more powerful do you show up in a relationship when I got my money and you got your money and we're dancing this dance together? That's a lot more powerful than I'm in this relation, relationship needy for money. So this idea of self-reliance is a cause and um and I'm really changing people's lives. And it's like, if we can be more self-reliant instead of others' reliance, that's called strength. And I think it's spiritually strong. Anyway, the point is, is to wrap this all stuff all up is um, um, 
you know, what's your cause? What do you stand for? And if you don't take the time to do the inner work, you know, that's in my, we always do like choose your business wisely. And like your business should be a reflection of who you are. And um, you can sell somebody else's business. You can sell somebody else's product. Um, and you can align with someone else's cause. That's the only way you're going to succeed in someone else's business is if their cause becomes your cause and I can walk around carrying that cause in my soul. OK, but if I don't believe in your cause and this is just a job as a money a way to make money and make a commission, I'm going to be not near as impactful as somebody who does have that in their soul. Absolutely. Ivan, you want to say something? Yeah. Um... So like, you know, I work in construction, right? Um, and we do, um, we do the frames and, you know, like we make the house from like, you know, from the bottom up. Um, I'm more of like, more like a contractor role. And the thing that I, that I started to do now that I felt like engaged me more into the work was, cause it's like, obviously like, I mean, it's very different from like me, me as I am you know, um, like, you know, so I'm so like into the body and health and stuff. So uh, me working in construction was like weird, you know, it just didn't fit me. But I felt like I had to do it, you know, because it pays really well. Um, and so the way that I finally engaged with it was, I was like, these are my houses. You know, there's not it's not a house that I'm making It's my house, you know, and I'm and we're doing all these houses now. And, and it's like, and things are moving faster and I, and I feel more comfortable being there when it's like, it's my place now, you know? And I, I think the same thing goes whenever I work with other people, it's like, it's not, I'm not, I'm not fixing like your life. It almost feels like my, your life becomes my life. And I have some, I, like, we got to do something about it. Like now, like ASAP, you know, that's how I feel when I work with people where it's like, that's, you came to me. You gave me the you gave me the responsibility of uh and the and the freedom and the and the ability to to like to like tweak at it. So we're gonna so I'm gonna tweak at it like it's mine, you know, because I I've been through those problems, you know. So in, in a way, it's like it's like make it yours. That's what I I want to put out right now. I really love that, and it's like I'm I'm not just building a house. This is a this is a house for family, and like it, it's like my family, like this is my house and you're ultimately the ones that are going to live here, but like, it, it's my house and, and like your family. And like, we're doing this, I'm doing this to help other people, but it's like, you're taking that ownership. And so um, you're coming from that core that I'm not just doing this because I'm making houses. It's like, this means something like people are going to live here. It's like fam's going to live here. And you, and then you're a provider. I mean, sheesh you know doing carpentry man that puts you right in the, the in the ranks of jesus you know jesus was a carpenter you're a carpenter you know it's like uh you're doing godly work i want to interject real quick uh both alejandro and joe inspired me to say this it has a lot to do with where do you come from the money is important absolutely because you know say i have a company and I have multiple people working under me, we need to make bread, we need to make bank. However, what is the true success that you carry? You have to say the outer success, I can design a new lifestyle for myself through this business, which is fantastic. And I remember a few months ago, Joe and our uh, mastermind group decided to also go over what is the true intrinsic value that we give ourselves through working with our clients, through coaching our clients, through making new lives and new paradigms for our clients. What I myself found out is I have a very strong altruistic nature, which makes the coaching pressurable, which means not only do I get to give myself the pleasure of feeling great about impacting people's lives, but I'm actually impacting people's lives. And it's like a trade for a trade in a way. Both shrink to each other. And it comes a lot from the quote of what ACD likes to use, to speak from blood, to speak from what is pure, to speak from what I know it's true, because it resonates so, so, so deeply that even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, you can feel the vibe 
It's like dancing in many ways. It's like the song that you sent me, Sumit. Initially, I didn't get it until I started to listen to it and I realized, oh, so there's where I'm coming from and there's where we all of a sudden can start creating pilots, projects, and ultimately the sale, of course. Passing it to you, Sumit, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, it's very interesting. I'm just, I'm reminded of a visualization that I did quite recently where I went back to my younger self and I saw, I was giving my <laughs> younger self an elevator pitch. So <laughs> I, I imagined that the younger version of me who needed something in that moment, I've got to become the person now who would save that younger version of me. So I looked at it from this mentality of like, I got you. You know, like, like, I totally got you, man. Like, I know it. I've been there before. Like, I know what's coming up for you, you know? And that level of, like, conversion confidence, as Joe calls it, like, that level of where you're showing up and you're just like, I know. I know what you've been through. Like, I, I understand what you're going through right now. And that deep connection changes something in an, in an individual. And I think that's ultimately so powerful when... We can have that and understand that, okay, our younger self is our past self, right, in a sense, but also the fact that you got to know what your kryptonite is in your business. What is your business kryptonite like? The thing that just keeps self-sabotaging you and like gets you, you know, coming back and again and again and not making any sales, right? Really pinpointing that will help your vibe out a lot. It's like what entities are stuck to your business, you know, that are uh, not helping you flourish. And I think that knowing what you want will also make it clear what you don't want. And so when you take a stand, you also got to know what you don't stand for. I love that. You know, I mean, the superhero persona, it's really important to know what that is and what is our mission? What is our cause? What are our superpowers? What is our magic sword? What is it we bring to the table? Um, and when you know, like, like, you know, when you combine that with what we were talking about earlier about having a cause and having a mission and knowing what my purpose is and what, like you show up so freaking powerfully. And so um, number one is take the time to do the shadow work. Take the time to know who you are and what you bring to the table take the time to figure out like, how am I going to change the world through my superpowers, through my gifts, through my offering. Okay. And um, like when you show up that way, it's like, you know, there's, you know, 8 billion people on the planet, but nobody else has my unique set of superpowers, you know, to solve these particular problems. And, and so, you know, other people do other things, but this is my deal, you know, and I've got the big S on my chest showing up in this way to um to to save the day to improve conditions you know the the common thread in all of our spending we spend money on things that either improve our conditions or we perceive will improve our conditions you know a lot of people buy that bottle of jack daniels because they perceive that it has value they, they perceive it'll improve their life and we could have a debate around that but but the point is is um you know, there's the real gold and the fool's gold, you know, so we don't want to chase the fool's gold. We want to show up, you know, I'm not a fake superhero. I'm a real superhero doing real work to change real lives, you know, um, and, uh, and I, you know, as I'm speaking this, there, I see two, like two things going on here. One is, is like, I'm a person that has a business that is a stand in my business, but a lot of people don't have that. Like they don't have like, they're just trying to make a live and they're, you know, they're looking at, you know, getting a job. Okay. And like I said earlier, it's like the only person somebody's going to like, like when you show up as that superhero, superpower doing super things to help super people have a more super life. It's different than having a job because you're trying to make a paycheck. And the only way that you're going to really thrive at that level is if, if the cause of my business, you know, like, like the cause of the employee becomes the cause of the employer. If, if that person resonates with that cause, they will have that vibration. They will have that spirit. Okay. Uh, but I think that's more the exception than the rule, you know? Um, 
because my cause is my cause. It's not somebody else's. I'm not following someone else's cause. And the big problem or the big challenge is if I follow somebody else's cause, it might be a great cause, but then they die. And all of a sudden, like, am I taking over their cause? So there's this, this idea, if you're not, if you're not um, building your dream, you're building someone else's. So I think it's just a great shortcut to just figure out, well, who are you? What do you stand for? But maybe somebody can speak to those other people who don't know their business. They don't know their calling, trying to figure it out. Um, you know, how does this vibrational marketing and spiritual selling apply to them? I mean, I have some ideas, but I'd like to, this is, this is what I do, but maybe I'd like to hear from some other people. Sure. Um, we can open the, the call to the rest of the group in about 10 minutes. Then we're at the 30 uh, minute mark. Let me interject on what Joe said on being clear on where you come from. One of the things that really helped me in my own business is being very clear on who I, am at, who I am as a person in the here and now and where I want to go. Where do I see myself in a year? Where do I see myself in five years? And evidently building a business was one of the targets to hit. And now going through this process, what I've noticed is if I'm vague about my own qualities as a human being, it's very hard to be connected to uh, the purpose of a company. If it is my purpose as, let's say, a business optimizer to optimize a business or a marketing process or an IT process, I need to be clear as who I'm doing it as because the character that I'm playing is let's say the coach, the guru, the consultant. And that consultant has to have a certain service attached to it. And what I've noticed is the more I connect to what is true to me, the more my client tends to resonate and thus making him more sellable. For instance, just before this call, just before the warm up that we've done, I talked to Trey Morgan from, I believe his group is called the Sexy Beast Tribe. He's changing his name up as we speak. Where he wants to uh, get more paid clients to the community he has built. However, before I even talk about how I can help him, he builds rapport. There's like the first step that you have to do. When, where, regardless of whether you're going to sell or market to the client. That's evident. These are the things that I've learned from Joe. And by building report, evidently, we have to compare values and virtues and see how we can vibe. It's the same thing with dating. It's the same thing with hanging out with your friends. There's a vibe. And through that vibe, the marketing becomes easier. The poetic pitching be, uh, becomes easier. And slowly but surely, it becomes clear what his business is about, why our values connect, why we should work together, what problems come up, and what the true cause is of what he wants to do with his company, his community, why he believes that he can change the lives of others. And I'm like, bro, if it was a client, I would love to hear you, hear you say these things. Like, I get why people want you, but are you clear about it? I'm giving it to Alejandro. What are your thoughts on that, brother? I think you're frozen, brother. Yeah, I think so too, man. Or to Alejandro, I must be an internet thing. Sumit, what do you take over? Yeah, so as he's reconnecting. Um, all right, he's reconnected, I think. Hey, what's up, everybody? I, I disappeared. Um, so you guys can hear me good. So for me, I, I feel like a lot of times I have to, instead of being Mr. Perfect, right. Instead of being Mr. Perfect, where it's like, I got the fucking abs and I got fucking great relationship and, and I, I am all, I always eat great. All my food is fucking good. Oh, I'm in the gym again. I'm doing some, some workout that you probably never seen nobody do. And instead of trying to be Mr. Perfect. I, I try to be more like Mr. Real. And, and Mr. Real has problems, 
right? And the reason that I'm I'm I am where I'm at is because I've I've actually had a lot of problems, right? And I decided to actually face them, right? And I think that's that's kind of like as a coach, that's what you bring. Like it's like, yeah, I was that 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 person just like where you are right now i was that person you know like we're not that different all, all the really is i just i i did i did some some little research and i changed my mind i flipped it up but i was literally in your shoes and i'm and sometimes i'm still in your shoes sometimes i i go back to to that you know like i'm not i'm not perfect i'm not perfect at, at all and i think that's when i began to be like that that's when people resonated more with my content right because before that point it was just like it was like oh it was just ivan and it sort of felt like it sort of it, was, it almost felt like people felt put down right by their i mean it was the literally was their own insecurity being putting themselves down whenever i would like i'm over here and i'm i'm shining right so i had to like kind of clarify to the people like yo i'm not just i'm not always like this you know this isn't this isn't me all the time i sometimes don't want to go to the gym I sometimes don't want to get out of bed, right? It's just like, I think that's, 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 that's it. That's the answer. Like be, be real about how you ended up where you are right now. You know, you didn't, because people will look at you 100%. People will look at you and people will be like, and they will create this halo effect imagery. They'll think about you as so perfect, right? But how can, if you were born perfect, how can you help somebody, you know? You actually, you can't, right? But if you're born imperfect and you have to work through it, that's, that's the, the only way. Then you can actually help somebody. That, that's what the people are going to think. So, yeah. I love that. You know, I mean, we can, we can pretend to be like perfect, but it's just bullshit and it, it comes out in the end. You know, it, it, I, I think it's just much better to say, look, um, uh, I'm not perfect. I strive to do better every day. I'm committed to the truth about reality. I'm committed to growth, but that doesn't mean I've attained, you know, like we're all going through this journey together. And I think, you know, why does Tiger Woods, like when his wife beats him up for cheating on somebody or whatever, why do we get pissed off at him? But then we look at a Hugh Hefner and he's got like a billion women around him. Well, the reason why is because Hugh Hefner is authentic. He says, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. Like I have multiple women in my life versus Tiger. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm like this shiny, you know, uh, be like me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm some kind of person to look up to. And so when we see somebody that's trying to portray like, I'm, you know, I'm all that. And then they fall short. We see the hypocrisy. OK, we don't look at, uh, you know, hypnotica and say, oh, he's got a bunch of women around, you know, like. He's straight up about it. So it's like, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. You know, I tried monogamy. It didn't work for me. You know, I was miserable all the time. And I'm, I'm happy having a lot of women in my life. And so, like, when we're authentic with who we are and put out who we are, like, here's all my flaw. You know, here's, here's who I am and what I stand for. And I'm flawed. That's just part of, you know, uh, Superman's got his kryptonite. And, and so we don't want to deny our kryptonite. Like we want to embrace the fact that kryptonite is our, you know, is something that doesn't work for me. And uh, I am weak around kryptonite. You know, Superman's not super powerful all the time. He's got flaws. And, and so part of our character um, is to be flawed it's, and embrace our flaws. This is who I am, you know, and take it or leave it. And uh, um. I, I love that, you know, em, embrace your flaws, admit you have flaws, make your damaging admissions, just be the best version of yourself that you can be, you know, and, and like with all the flaws, take it or leave it, you know, and uh, I resonate with those people because it's, it's real. Like you said, be real. It's authentic. I think one of my superpowers is the fact that I made a lot. I lost everything. And I felt that a lot of stuff I learned was a big fat lie. Like everything you learned about business is a big fat lie. And so I've been on this pursuit for the truth. It's been an obsessive compulsive quest for the truth of what really, really works. And I did that for myself. But then I started to realize, wow, a lot of people don't have the truth. It's like, I can help other people uh, get to that truth. And so, because 
I put the truth as a high value for me in the pursuit of the truth. You know, what happens is if you spend 20 years seeking the truth, you actually pick up some along the way. Okay. And then when you speak, you know, in a world where everybody's trying to bullshit each other and then you show up and you speak the truth, it's like, wow, this person's speaking the truth. That's, that's refreshing. Like this person speaking the truth, they have a vibration of truth, not a vibration of sales pitch, like bullshitting because I want to, I want to make money, you know? And so uh, it's that quest for the truth and saying, you know what, you have your way of doing business. And, and my, my way is like, I'm just based on the truth. Like it, like that's the starting place. And totally. And what you're saying about, uh, about hypocrisy, I think is really interesting. I would say that like hypocrisy is almost like a brand repellent in a sense where, you know, if you're showing up as your brand, but then you're doing things behind the scenes that are completely against your branding, like it's going to come across and people are going to smell that from a mile away. Right. So just be able to understand that and you know, honestly, what has really helped me is choosing specific words for my business that are like maybe like five elements or so. I like to think of it that way. Um, and those words being a solution to my client's problems that I that I choose to embody in myself. So my words are perspective, alignment, flow and mastery. So my language is going to shift how I speak to someone if they're asking me about a certain problem for instance if someone's like man you know i just feel so stuck i don't know why and i would i would use language and what are you resisting right now you know and use that flow state language in actually showing up in that way because that is what my brand embodies and that is my flow vocabulary and i think that a lot of sales courses is basically just communication courses and, you know, it's just like learning how to communicate in a way that is pure and authentic and, and truthful, like you said, Joe. Can I go a little contradictory on that now? Because because language is super important. But, it, you know, uh, John Caples, who wrote uh, Tested Advertising Techniques, who tested everything, you know, he said that basically the, the success of your marketing is basically three things. 40% is being in front of the right market, the right people. Like for, if you have a solution to a problem, you know, if you're trying to sell, you know, feminine hygiene products in Sports Illustrated, you're in front of the wrong crowd. It's all men. So we don't want to sell female products to a male audience. So the 40% of your effectiveness is being in front of the right people. 40% is your offer, like what you're actually giving in exchange for the, the money. And then 20% is the copywriting, the words. And so that 20% is super important because with the if you don't get that right, you're actually sabotaging your message. But I think instead of asking, what are the right words I need to say to get the sale? And, and I agree with you, like when you're talking in terms of flow and mastery and um, perspective, those are powerful things that you're bringing to the table. It's more than the words, it's actually part of the offer, okay? So instead of asking, what words do I need to say to get the sale? What do I need to give that's so damn valuable that you'll give back in the form of cash? Okay, so the words part is important, but it's that giving part. So let's stop asking, you know, what words do I need to say is important, but like, what am I giving that's so damn, um, Todd Brown, the marketer calls it an S-I-N offer. You want to create a S-I-N offer, which is superior irresistible no-brainer if i'm giving so much value it's such a superior valuable it's an irresistible value it's a no-brainer of course you're going to spend money and then like the words i use are almost superfluous the purpose of marketing is to make selling superfluous all right i'll shut up <laughs> All right, guys, I'll take over real quick. We're already at the 30 minute mark. Let's take a five minute break. And I'm opening up uh, the group to questions. We'll then do, you know, another 30 minutes of an open group, an open format. So any questions can be asked. Unmute all.
Yo, Sumit, you want to talk about uh, your business and the meme marketing? Meme marketing, you said? Yeah, why not? I mean, that's, that's yeah. how we became each other's uh, customers and uh, coaches at the same time. For sure. So, yeah, I found that, you know, a lot of people posting a lot of memes and things like that for their business now. When I first started making memes, my approach was simply just to use one of my strengths, which is humor, to make people laugh and just emote and remember certain things, um, certain key concepts and things around it. Nowadays, I'm focusing more about how my memes can communicate a certain message in a brand and a, and a point that I'm trying to get across to the audience using an actual symbol or maybe a piece from a comic book or a funny video and purely using that as a way to communicate a specific concept related to flow state or giving my own interpretation of what this picture means to you. Of course, at the same time, it is funny because we remember things when we laugh a lot more. It is a very social art form to laugh. And so I think in terms of that, being able to really understand that there's specific images associated with your niche, with your industry, specific hashtags as well, that just are going to bring a certain tribe towards you, right? And I think really establishing that has helped me and being able to utilize, first and foremost, I have used reels, uh, Instagram reels nowadays a lot more and just being able to be versatile with the upcoming trends. Because in these next couple of years, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of trends that are going to come up again and again and again. And it's just like every single online influencer, marketer, um, entrepreneur, healer has got to adapt with the new information and the new tools. So how are you being, you know, the powerful magician not the mischievous one, the shadow magician who's sitting in the back and just like, haha, I have all these tools now. Uh -huh. trying to but instead it's like, have this, you know, this utility belt that I'm here to actually present to the world and see if anybody resonates with that utility belt's frequency. And the more you can create these moments of consciousness all around the globe, and really spread your message in a way where you're getting much more reach, you're getting much more eyes on you, but also ears and as well as all the other senses, in fact, because a lot of the times we need the emotion in order to manifest, right? You know how they say you have to feel it? Well, yeah, it's the same in marketing. You have to feel the advertisement in order to actually take the next step. And of course there are, you know, types of subliminal messaging and things like that in marketing and, and symbols and things like that. However, I just know when I see an ad like Billy Jean, for instance, right? He shows, he's so transparent. He like shows you where he works, you know? He's like, yeah, like this is exactly what I'm doing. Like, and he, he just hooks you in with the first couple of words. And then, you know, he, he has a way that he does that that's so natural and in his flow state that I think that a lot of people can adopt that video marketing uh, as an example of that. And then there's certain ads which you're like, I'm going to skip this. Okay. It's giving me a three second skip video option. I'm definitely going to skip this. You know, because there's a certain vibe with certain ads, which you're like, wow, this is unique. I've never really experienced something like this before. And then there's certain ads, which you're like, ah, next, I'm going to turn this off immediately. Have you guys experienced that? What is your experience with that, guys? Dude, for sure, dude. Like, I was actually studying um, Ty Lopez, his marketing. And, and he, dude, he's, he, he's so good. Like, the way he, he pulls you in. And this is what I noticed. Like, he'll be like, um, so over here in my garage, and uh, these are my cars. Um, but really, I want to talk to you about, you know, you know, business, you know, I, I, I have had a lot of coaches, you know, I've been training for a while, right? Um, and, and actually, um, actually, this right here is my favorite book, right? This is my favorite book on, on knowledge is written by an author. And um, um, so basically, 
you know, when, when you get this product, you know, I, I want to take you to this product, right? Right. And he'll, he'll do that. And then he'll, he'll, there's one thing where he takes you through his whole house, dude. And, and the whole time he's saying like, oh, we're going to go, we're going to get to it in a second, right? We're going to get to it in a second. And then, and then he's like, actually, this, this ad is too long. So just go ahead and click the link and it's going to take you to a, to a website. And like, he does that, like he, he pulls you in and it's, it's strange because by suddenly switching to a different topic unrelated to that of the sales, like it all, it's something like it switches some sort of thing in your brain off so that you're not like, oh, let me skip this, right? In a way, you're almost like, oh, let me see what Ty's about to say next. Yeah, unfortunately, first of all, that's not too repeatable. Like, hey, here's my Lambos. Uh, but Ty actually gets a lot of heat for that, though. Um, you know, because, you know, Dan Locke, you know, he shows this lifestyle. He just got evicted from his apartment, dude. You know, um, you know, Ty Lopez does have money. OK, um, but he kind of used a lot of these props to get them there. And so there's a lot of jokes about how Ty Lopez like like he's not the real deal, you know, and he's done these like phony things to get ahead. And I'm not I'm not laying down judgment. I mean, sheesh, you know, it's like. If I take Joe in a brown paper bag versus Joe in a powder blue Tiffany box, it's the same Joe. Okay. But by packaging it, you know, it becomes more attractive. You know, when I, I mean, I'm shooting a video here in an Airbnb that it actually is kind of imagined. It's three stories, six baths. There's like only three people that live here, you know, like I'm one of them, you know, while I'm traveling, going back to, but the point is, is, you know, I, I shoot a video, I can take it in a very vanilla background or it's like, where was I the other day? It was like, I was using the environment, you know, to enhance my message. So we want to use the environment to enhance our message. We want to frame ourselves, you know, Tiffany package versus brown paper, pa you know, brown paper bag. It's the same Joe. It's the same Alejandro. It's the same Ryan, it's the same Sumed, but we're packaged more attractively. So we want to package ourselves attractively and we want to give the value. You know, I think ultimately there's a lot of coaches out there and, you know, I want to be the guy that people say, Hey, I hired Joe and he's the real deal. I don't want to be like, I hired Ty Lopez and he took my money and I got a bunch of stuff and I never like accomplished anything. So right. I think, I think your best marketing, your best vibration is being the real deal um, and not just being about the money, but really about the giving part. Like the receiving is is cool, but if, if it, it comes from the giving and like, well, we give like an amazing way and change lives, you know, there's no shame at the end of the day. It's like, I really, you know, did that. Yeah. And I just have to say that I, I completely agree with that idea of, you know, promotion is just basically getting the word out in an aesthetic way that attracts attention, right? We're in this attention economy and, you know, the currency is, you know, our ears and our eyes. <laughs> and so when we can get someone just, you know, in that energy of like, whoa, this is different, but this is unique. I've never seen this before, huh? Like that pattern interrupt <laughs> exactly what you're saying in terms of, you know, there's a lot like I, I know the, um, what's that guy's name? Sam something. Sam Ovens, I think his name is, right? The, the consultant guy. He held up like this random, like, you know, random object, like a, like a animal skull or something like that random, which is immediately you go, whoa, what is that? Like, why am I so fascinated by this? Because it's uncommon, right? It's not something that you see. If we were animals in the wild, right? and we saw something very uncommon, it would immediately be flood to our sensors of like, well, this is either dangerous or new, or how can I adapt to this? It would get us to go through that thinking process. And I think that that's what marketers are trying to do with like introducing this new stimulus or this symbol that is unique, that attracts attention and the wherever attention goes, energy flows, as we all know. You know, I'm, I'm actually reminded of this episode of Weeds um, where, where they, they just took the regular weed that they were selling, right? But they, they packaged it like super nice and they went to the country club, right? 
and they were telling everybody about th- about this weed, about how dope it was and how fucking fancy, best fucking weed ever. And it was like in a hella nice box, which gave it the impression that like that's how it is, you know. And and you know what? It's weird because as smart as as smart as I am, I know I'd probably fall into the same like the same thing, you know, where where like just because it it appears it's packaged differently, you know. Um, and the same thing goes like when actually if you, if you buy like a high end high, high fashion product, you go to Gucci, you go to Louis. The 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 process of actually getting the, the the thing that you bought, they put it in like box after box after box, and it's like it's almost like like you're unwrapping a present, right? Like it's Christmas Day, and like you have to go through the through this whole process. Um, and in a way, I think like like we we should do that for ourselves, right? We should package ourselves like we are that Gucci bag, right? Um, and that would just, that like, especially like if you're not, if you're not like so much older, I think, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think because I'm young, um, a lot of times people are like, oh, this guy, he's, he's too young. He's too young, you know what I mean? Um, but like if I package myself, right, as as me as the way that I am, right? You know, as am I am I am I comfortable dressing the way that I am? I'm comfortable speaking the way that I am. That's part of my packaging. Am I comfortable telling the story that I'm telling? That's part of my packaging, right? Am I comfortable being in in these environments that I'm going to? You know, um, that's my packaging, and and that's how I present myself. You know, you know, and it's the same way like when you present a picture on Instagram. Yeah, like, like, it's like, you know, unless if you're not like a sexy ass girl, you will not get a lot of likes on a selfie on a mirror selfie in the bathroom, bro. Like just straight up, it's just not gonna happen. You know? But what if you're at the park, right? And you got these trees in the background, right? Or you got you got these other objects, right? Um, suddenly, when you, you, you package it in a way that makes the eyes move around it makes the eyes dance that's what i like to say when i take pictures i'm making your eyes dance right so that's part of the packaging in a way and and yeah you know i think uh, i want to pass it on to somebody yeah so i i really like what you said there man and i think a lot of it does come down to like what does the brand represent really you know what i mean like when you're buying gucci you're not buying a bag you're buying an identity you're buying like a permission slip to be a certain kind of character, right? That's more luxurious or in that brand. So I think that brands, once they create their brand archetype, when you create your own brand, you got to understand you're giving people permission to step into this role, right? You're, You're casting a play right now and you're giving them like, okay, this is what auditions right this is what the role entails and if you buy this product you're going to get access to act in that particular manner so a lot of people are giving these permission slips through their products rather than actually be like a certain product like okay you buy a necklace it looks kind of cool but what is the meaning what is the interpretation that we're giving it that's what makes the difference it's like uh, certain- this necklace is made from objects that were gathered from a foreign country of antiquity that you know, there were tribal wars fought over, you know, like that story. To, it's just a necklace. But like if you could tell an origin story or, you know, where it came from or what's the story behind it, it's like and, and I think, you know, I think one of the challenges people have in business is they they don't have the story. They haven't put together that origin. They so, you know, for example, a lot of people say, hey, let's get together and do a strategy session. Well, to me, strategy session equals sales pitch. Okay. And so like, you know, Hey, it's a free strategy session. Yeah. Well, I know motherfucker, you're going to try and sell me. Okay. And so like, we have this thing that we're offering you. I want you to imagine like I'm walking down or you're walking down the street and you, or I'm walking down the street and I got this box. It's a black box. There's a hole in the box. You can't see in the box. You can't see in the hole. And I'm like, hey, Alejandro, put your hand in this box. And you're like, I don't okay. know. Boxes. 
to, there might be spiders or snakes or there might be a mouse trap in there. You know, you, you're trying to play a practical joke on me. So like, but if I said, hey, Alejandro, you know, um, this is my chocolate Skittles box. If I give it a sexy name, even though you can't see inside the box, it's going to be a little more attractive. And if I gave you a little flashlight and you could see inside the box and you could see, oh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get this. It's like and now all of a sudden it's like I don't have like you're like, hey, let me get my hand in the box. Like, so would you, would you say that the flashlight is like testimonials, Joe, or, or like the like the proof or like? What well, what is is, um, you know, you're by the flashlight, you're seeing what's in the box. So like it's giving you a framework. So so. Mm -hmm we need to package our box. We need to name it. Like, here's what the, the name of this box is and we need to frame it. Here's what you get on the inside. So if you name it and frame it, you know, it's not just a box, it's a Tiffany box. And it's not a Tiffany box, it's a Tiffany box with either jewelry or watches or gift certificates. All of a sudden it's like you've named it and you framed it so powerfully, I'm eager to get in that box. And so, you know, our business is very much like a black box. And so what do we name our business? What do we name that strategy session? If I say this is a, you know, a, a business breakthrough session where we're gonna discover, you know, what, what are you getting clear about where you're going? We're gonna get really clear about your obstacles and we're gonna come up with some magic dust to help you manifest this. Well that seems pretty freaking attractive, okay? And so all of us have a business that's a black box. And so how can we name it more attractively on the marquee? And how can we show people what's inside? And if we can name it attractively and show that what's inside is attractive, like that, that has a vibration to it. It has a poetry to it that makes you go, you know what? Tiffany sounds better than brown paper bag. For sure, actually. Um, and that's something that I learned um, from someone that looks like Dan Locke. <laughs> um, and he basically said, like, he was like, I had, he said, I had a client. And he was a personal trainer. And I told him, don't call yourself a personal trainer. Call yourself something like, like a, a body uh, transformation specialist or, or, uh, um, or so I know some people are like, they like to say like, I'm a Hollywood physique specialist, you know, and, and you're giving, that's why I, I don't, I'm not, I don't call myself a life coach. I call myself a personal reality coach, right? Because that's essentially, that's, I think that's more unique, right? And I think it's, it's more to the point and it's more clear what it is that I'm doing. So like, yeah, it is, it's like giving it a, a fancier name, a nicer name, but at the same time, it's, it should represent more authentically and more clearly, more to the point what it is you do. Be like, if you say life coach, it could be relationship, could be health, could be, could be wealth. You know, it's, it's too broad, right? But if you narrow, if you say. Yeah, when, like when people say mindset coach, it's like, what are you getting them in the mindset to do what exactly? You know what I mean? Like That, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, it's okay to call yourself a life coach as long as you don't mind not getting paid. Like if you want to get paid as a life coach, don't call yourself a life coach. Okay. Um, and, and even the word coach. Okay. It used to be a very highly respected word. You know, Vince Lombardi was the coach of the green Bay Packers for the first Super Bowl. You know, John Wooden was a coach of UCLA, you know, and had like the biggest record winning streak, like, like, that where they won like almost every game you know but now the good news is anyone could be a coach and the bad news is anyone could be a coach and so the 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 name coach itself is sullied and so like I have to separate myself you know I'm not just a business coach I'm more than a coach I'm more than a mentor I'm your strategic thinking partner I'm somebody that's going to help you solve your problems and build out a superior military strategy so you can dominate I'm going to teach you to build your business as a battleground but i'm going to also teach you to build your business as a playground so you're not just working but you're having fun along the way so you want to call me coach i'm more than a coach like like let's leave i'm a mentor like the problem with words is they box us in and so like you can call me coach but i'm way more than that <laughs>
And, and so um, you want to separate yourself from the path. There's an idea, you know, and Jay Abraham teaches, it's called unique selling proposition. You know, if I'm a coach and you're a coach and we got four or five, six coaches in the room, we're all coaches. And so now we're commoditized. Like we're not all the same. And so what we want to do is differentiate ourselves. Why are we unique? Why are we special? Why are we different? Please don't say I, you know, one of the biggest insults somebody can say to me is like, you know, I meet somebody and they're like, I know somebody who does exactly what you do. It's like, no, you don't. Fuck you. Like, they're not like me. Okay. I'm completely different. And we need to like fight to maintain our uniqueness. Otherwise people will commoditize us. And now we are selling for as a commodity low price instead of like, I'm not just a coach. I'm the guy that's going to solve your fucking problems. Yeah, Joe, th this reminds me of a technique that you told me it, to help me with my copywriting. So I want to share that with the audience. Um, first of all, I called it poetic copywriting for a reason, because poets, that they they're really great with associations. And associations is where the mind gets into that creativity. It's like these old ideas with a new perspective, basically. And so poets do this really well. Of course, it can go to the point where it's completely abstract. However, the poets are tapping into that right side of the brain for pe for people so you know the idea that you know joe taught me is like go to amazon and then find like a product that is similar to yours let's say it's a book that you're selling let's say it's a you know it's a video course whatever it is and just look at the bad reviews <laughs> and see what people are saying about that product that you can bring through that is missing in the marketplace. Like, I think that was an incredible revelation for me personally, because I didn't realize that people were struggling with this thing in that particular niche before, right? It's like, when you, when you read these comments, you're like, oh, why aren't people doing that? You know, <laughs> it's, we don't ask people what they want at times. I think that that's it. Like as marketers, we, we get scared to ask people's opinions and you know, take surveys and things like that. But I think it is important to listen to what people truly need and uh, stepping up with that solution. I want to interject on that. Um, one, the first thing that came up with, as a consultant, it's my job to, to become the trusted advisor of my client. That's one. And two, you made an excellent point to me. It's about what they want and need. But as a consultant, I have to find out what a true root cause is by asking, let's say, a method of asking five times why is a great method to really, you know, further understand what's going on to the point where you uncover the hidden problem, to even uncover the emotional problem, like, oh, I see how these things relate to each other. Now my services can be more impactful, more efficient, more effective. Because, you know, from the logic that we have, we uncover the root cause. And the root cause is inevitably, undeniably linked to an emotional uh, power, let's say. Because let's say you're optimizing business, but it feels insecure about, you know, marketing. Why is that? And if I can solve that, the problem will inevitably fix long term. Because even if I improve the process or the processes, if he still feels insecure about the marketing or about even servicing his clients, I have missed a major point of improvement. Joe, what is your opinion on that? Uh, I didn't catch the last sentence. Well, the, 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 the question part. Oh, the question part had to do with uh, the before that had to do with, even if I improve the process, I have to help my client step over boundaries, emotional boundaries or emotional insecurities in combination with the, the business improvements. And I was curious on your vision or on your perspectives on that. Yeah, change won't happen unless there is um, um, a predisposition for change. Change won't happen unless there's enough emotional currency. You know, um, if I'm not hungry enough to make the change, I'm not going to make the change. Just because a consultant comes in and says, these are the things you need to do. Like, I better understand the reasons why. I mean, I, I need some kind of, you know, so 
uh, I need some kind of impetus. I need some kind of, you know, I tell this story. I've been telling it a lot lately, but you know, there's once upon a time, a, a grandfather and a grandson are on the, sitting on the porch and the dog is howling and the grandson says, grandpa, why is the dog howling? And grandpa says, cause it's in pain. So the grandson says, well, why is he in pain? He says, cause he's laying on a nail. It's like, well, why doesn't he move? And grandpa says, not in enough pain yet. Okay. And so like, um, as consultants, as advisors, as coaches, as experts, we come in and we make recommendation and there is a resistance to stay because, you know, it's called inertia, like a, a, a body at rest will stay at rest. And a, but a body on a certain trajectory will stay on that trajectory unless a new force acts upon it. Okay. And there will be resistance. And so, um, you know, I tell people, um, you, you know how, um, do you know how a pearl is formed inside of an oyster? It's cultivated inside of an oyster. Did you know it's not possible for that oyster to cultivate that pearl without that grain of sand irritant? As your business coach, that's my job. I am your irritant. I am the guy that's going to make you a little uncomfortable. I am, I am the irritant that's going to help shape you into your know, pearl. So change is a little bit uncomfortable. But if I didn't show up to make you a little uncomfortable, no pearl would form, no change would happen. And so my job is to, you know, um, I'm not here to like make you angry or piss you off, but I am here to get you a little uncomfortable and get you off the nail, get you into action, you know, to get you to feel, you know, you're in pain, but you're not taking action. Maybe we need to like remember why this is so painful and amplify that pain and make you more sensitive to the pain. So you get off your ass and make some freaking change. So be the, be the grain of sand, be the irritant as an agent of change. Mm, I love that, Joe. And I, yeah, I just want to clarify that, that a lot of, you know, marketers, they sort of, they poke at the pain point, right? Too much. It's like they, they really try and get the pain, make them bleed and, you know, until they make the sale at the end. So, yeah, what, what you just said is to be the irritant. It's like, you don't have to take it to that extreme length. You can still understand that someone is going through something and you can be the solution to their pain, essentially, right? Be the pain reliever. Um, yeah, you know, I am, I am compassionate as your, I'm compassionate as your irritant. Yeah, <laughs> compassion. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's very uh, flow. That was very flow of you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Uh, anybody have any last questions? We're going to be wrapping up our third genius days. You know, there, there, there's something I want to say. That, you know, uh, I learned this in sales training with Tom Hopkins like 30 years ago. But, um, you know, we sit down. When we go into a sales situation, we don't want to be pressure. We want to be almost like a deflated balloon. No pressure at all. You know, maybe I can help you. Maybe I can you know, and it's really, it's malpractice to give a, a prescription without a prior di diagnosis first. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions and I'm going to get to know that person and to see if, or does this even make sense for them? And I'm going to assume it doesn't make sense. There's no pressure here. But once, once I realize I really can help them solve their problem, I can take them from shitville to heaven. Okay. When I start to realize, then what happens is before the client makes a decision to buy my product. I need to, as the doctor, make the decision that they're going to own this because it's going to heal them and it's going to make their life better. So before they make a decision, I need to make a decision. You know what? They're going to be a winner as a result of making this decision. So I have no pressure going in. I'm here to discover. Once I realize this, this, this medicine is a cure for you, then I'm going to prescribe that medicine and I'm going to shift from no pressure to being an advocate for your ownership because you have a disease. I can cure that disease. Uh, it's not, you know, I've done a proper diagnosis. So now I can make a prescription. You need to own this, even though you don't know you need to own this yet. Yeah, the advocate for your ownership. I really like that. That's that's a great um just a, a great perspective to see that because a lot of people don't take responsibility and they need someone to hold them accountable. 
So the fact that you're coming in and you're like, hey, look, I'm, I'm going to guide you through this. I'm going to you know, take you by the hand and make you climb this mountain. I'm your consciousness Sherpa, right? <laughs> I'm here to show you these new levels. Yeah, I'm here to heal you. I'm here to make you better, you know, and, you know, yeah. I know how sucky it is with you living in the problem. And there's a cost to solving the problem. There's a cost to not solving the problem. And it's expensive to live in the problem. And you don't have to live in the problem. Like, I genuinely am here to help. And I've got the medicine. So, you know, like, buy the medicine, administer the medicine, and be healed. And, and forevermore, you can live a better life. You know, I'm, 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 I'm coming here to heal you, not to, like, you know, money at the service of others is good. Money at the expense of others is evil. And, like, I'm here to help you. Like, and, and I'm, there's no shame in that. Mm. I'm proud to help. I feel good about helping. And that's what makes me like the trusted advisor, not the douchebag pushy sales guy. Because like, you know, you don't have to buy my medicine, but you'll probably die. And I care about you as a human being. So let's just do the right thing. Get the medicine, you know, pay your bill and, and live happily ever after. Amazing. Awesome. So guys, we're wrapping up our third installment of Genius Days. And thank you for being a part of this. If you're watching the recording, make sure that you listen to the other episodes. They're also incredible. This time we we're talking about vibrational marketing. You know, if you have any questions, please send uh, Joe a message as well as either of us. I'm going to post them in the show notes. And yeah, guys, this has been a very transformative conversation. We're going to make these very regular. So every Sunday we're showing up, adding lots of value. So thank you once again for being a part of this and may the flow be with you. May you never be the same again.